has a purpose. Now, the difference between an acorn's purpose is that see, an acorn's purpose, for example, is to grow into a fully grown oak tree. But you see that an acorn can't decide to wake up one day and say, I'm not gonna become an oak tree anymore. I'm tired of this normal life. I'm gonna do something else. Uh -uh. An acorn can only do what it's made to do. In fact, every creature, everything besides humans can only do and follow its intrinsic purpose. What does that mean? A dog can only be a dog. A chair can only be a chair. A cat can only behave like a cat is made to behave. If the conditions are, are normal and natural, um, um, uh, an ear is not gonna decide one day I want to see now, and an eye is gonna say I wanna hear, and a mouth is gonna say I wanna touch. Everything created besides man does not have the choice to decide what they will do with their life. That's what I'm trying to say. It is only man because of our free will. We are the only creatures, in fact, not even just creatures, we're the only thing existing because even inanimate objects have purpose. A phone is not a creature, a living creature, but it has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. Human beings are the only thing, whether living or not living, that can choose to deny its purpose because of our choice. A phone can't deny its purpose. A dog can't deny its purpose. A tree can't deny its purpose. A tree will be a tree. A tree will grow and produce fruits. If the conditions are natural, if the conditions are correct, that is the, the what, that's what we expect of trees. But only human beings, because of our choice, I, as a human, I can decide not to live my purpose. I don't have to. God won't force me to. An animal will, a tree will, a chair can only function by its purpose. This chair that I'm sitting in has a purpose. The purpose of this chair is to provide me the comfort of being able to sit down. That's the purpose of this chair. Very simple purpose, not very complicated, simple purpose. There is not a day in this life that this chair is gonna get up and say, I'm tired of being a chair, I'm gonna do something else in my life. It's not possible, it doesn't have that choice. But humans do. A human can get up and, and decide that I don't wanna do what God has called me to do, I'll do something else with my life. We have choice. See, so this is why this teaching is very important because discovering your purpose, number one, not even fulfilling it, but even discovering it is a, is a choice because a chair does not have to, dis have to discover its purpose. It doesn't have the intelligence to reason in that way. It doesn't decide to follow its purpose. An acorn does not decide to follow its purpose. A dog does not decide to behave like a dog. That's all it can do because they're not equipped with the intelligence to make those intelligent. That's a very intelligent decision. Purpose is second. There are not many things in this world more powerful than the concept of purpose. That decision to abide by one's purpose is a very, very intelligent decision, you see? And the only creature of all God's creation that has that decision is man. A man can decide that I will not live by my purpose because we are the, the only creatures, well, there are other creatures, but the only creatures in this earth that are equipped with that level of intelligence. Every other creature will just do what's natural. You see, animals just live by natural instincts. Whatever they're naturally prone to do is what they'll do. They don't, they can't decide to, I'm gonna do, no. A giraffe will behave like a giraffe. A lion, you can guarantee that a lion will behave like a lion in normal circumstances, right? Even if a lion grows, grows up in a human's household, they'll still eventually behave. That's why usually when somebody like, you know how so many people like own a lion, they can't own them forever because eventually their instincts will start kicking in. They'll start trying to bite their neighbors or something like that, right? You have to let lions go into their natural habitat. They're not made to be in a house. It's gonna be dangerous. They're gonna break things in a house because that's not, they're not made for that. And all they know is their natural instincts. But humans are different. Humans have the ability to adapt to their environment. They can, humans, we can literally become anything. We can become anything. If I grow up in Russia, I'll, I'll behave like a Russian. If I grow up in India, I'll behave like an Indian. If I grow up in America, I'll behave like an American. Lions don't behave like in American lions or Indian. They just behave like lions. They just do what's natural. The, the lion in Africa is no different from the lion in India. They just behave naturally. You see, they don't have that choice. Humans are very intelligent creatures. We have choice. And so this teaching comes to first help you to be able to discover it because of the fact that you have intelligence, you can actually be living your life denying your purpose. This is very important. As you're living now, you can be actively deciding to reject your purpose and you can be a believer. It's not just unbelievers. I'm talking about a born again, tongue talking, Bible believing Christian can be living life deciding not to walk in the purpose. 
Because first you must discover it. It is not something that you just just snap. No, 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 no. You don't because again the the reason the the I um uh, <laughs> because that God gives you free will. He does not force anything for you to do. He does not force you to do something. So he can't force you to even discover the purpose anyway. It's not even about this forcing you to do what he's called you to do. He can't even force you to even find out what he's called you to do. So God leaves you like a blank slate. Whatever you do is up. He cannot force anything. He said, I lay before you life and death. Choose life. Remember Adam and Eve in the beginning of the garden. He put garden, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, tree of life. Adam, choose. I have no say-so. God has absolutely no say-so in the outcome of your life. Now, the thing, he wants to have a say-so, but he doesn't have to. I'm not saying God doesn't want to be involved in your life. He wants to be involved, but he doesn't have to be involved. You have to allow him to be, even as a believer. I'm not talking about unbelievers. A believer has to decide that number one, I will walk with God and walk in his ways. Number two, I will discover. Those are the two most important decisions of your life. The first most important decision, the first most important decision of your life is to is the decision to receive Christ as Lord and Savior because you will receive eternal life. The second most important decision is to decide to give God your life. Those are two completely different decisions. The decision to receive the life of God is a different decision than to give your life to God. Giving my life to God means that I am making an active decision to submit my will and my choice to God. Jesus says, nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. He's using his will to submit to God's will. Not every Christian makes that decision. It is a choice. Remember, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Meaning, he's deciding, not my will, but your will. He can say, my will. But he said, not my will. If he can say, not my will, he can say, my will. If he can deny, if you can deny something, you can accept something. If you can accept something, you can deny something. There's the law of balance. There has to be both sides of the coin. If he can accept God's will, he can reject God's will. And that is the difference between Adam and Jesus. Adam denied God's will. Jesus accepted God's will. And every human being has that decision. And even when you become a believer, you still have that choice to choose to live life your own way or choose to live life God's way. And I'm not talking about morally. I'm talking about in terms of God's purpose for your life, You're the telos of your life, the end goal of your life, the reason for which God put you on earth. I can live for 50 years and never even, number one, find it to even be able to walk in it. I can decide not even to be concerned with it to find it. Because the thing about God is that the Bible says that he does not cast pearl to swine. What does that mean? God does not give valuable things to people that don't value them. Your purpose is very valuable because your purpose represents what God wants to do in your life. And that's very important because that's how God glorifies himself. The entire purpose, well, let me leave that one. The only way God can uh, glorify himself is allowing his will to find expression. And the only way he can do that is that you yield your will to his will. He can only do what he wants to do is if you decide to do what he wants to do. Because he's a spirit, he can only do what he wants to do in the earth with a man. Because a man has a physical body and can move in the earth. God can't. He's a spirit being. He needs a man to embody and to use to do what he wants to do. And so your purpose, finding your purpose becomes very valuable to God. And so your purpose is, is, is a holy thing. He doesn't just throw it on people when they're not even willing to find it and even walk in it in the first place. He only reveals purpose to people who are concerned with purpose. Someone who's not serious about their purpose and destiny will not find it. The Bible says, uh, uh, give all diligence to make your calling and election sure. I'll show you the scripture. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one, verse 10, he says, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling an election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. That means it is a decision to, to discover what God has called you to do. It is not, a, it's not God doesn't force you, it is a choice. This is very powerful. Discovering your purpose. Let's go over some points made earlier. Again, everything created has a purpose. 
defined by its creator. Everything has a purpose, a telos, an end, an aim, a goal, you see, and is defined by, by its creator, whether man or by God. And because of man's free will, we're the only created thing, whether animate or inanimate, that can decide to live apart from its purpose. Acorns can't live apart from their purpose. They have to become fully grown oak trees. Not so with humans. We can decide to reject our purpose. 